Manx Radio's update with Lewis Foster. Faster my good evening. It's five o'clock on Wednesday, the 10th of July, 2024. It's midweek. We're getting there and hopefully, hopefully we can look forward to some brighter weather in the days ahead. Time for update your daily roundup of news on and from the Isle of Man today. Coming up in the next half hour, the island's police officers are getting a pay increase. We speak to the Minister for Justice and Home Affairs. A dentist on the island is placed under a warning. An update on Manx Telecom's plans to roll out fiber broadband and did you get tickets you know what we're talking about all of that and more plus we'll keep you posted on anything to watch out for travel wise your thoughts always welcome one double six one double seven or email studio at manxradio.com but time now for the man benham news headlines with chanel suku fast am i fast am i the second day of racing at the 2024 Southern 100 road races is due to get underway in the next hour. Roads around the Colas Balaun course will shut at five minutes past six. A dentist working on the Isle of Man has been placed under warning following an investigation sparked by complaints from a patient. Dr. Byron Sivos was formally warned by the General Dental Council on the 20th of June after a probe by the authority. And a pay increase for police officers on the island is hoped to help tackle recruitment and retention issues for the force. The Department of Justice and Home Affairs says it's already factored the increase into this year's budget. In international news, a man hunts underway for a triple murder suspect who's wanted in connection with the deaths of three members of sports commentator John Hunt's family. His wife Carol and their daughters were killed in a suspected crossbow attack in their home yesterday. Actor George Clooney has called for Joe Biden to leave the U.S. presidential race, saying he cannot win the fight against time. Clooney is a major supporter of the president, but has spoken out following his performance in last month's debate with Donald Trump. And a study has discovered evidence suggesting that if you save money, it'll help you sleep better. Scientists think putting money away leads to lower levels of anxiety and healthier sleep. Those are your headlines. News at 6. Thank you, Chanel. Now the weather brought to you by Manx Glass and Glazing. Dull with outbreaks of rain and drizzle this evening with light to moderate northwesterly winds. Further outbreaks of rain and drizzle overnight with a minimum temperature around 11 degrees. Still rather cloudy tomorrow, I'm afraid, with a few outbreaks of rain possible during the morning. Temperatures up to 15 degrees again in the moderate or locally fresh northwest wind. Dry with sunny intervals on Friday, a light northerly breeze and temperatures up to 16 degrees. Sunset sunset tonight, 9.48. Sunrise tomorrow, 5 o'clock on the dot. Manx Glass and Glazing don't just do the big jobs. It's easy to repair broken greenhouse glass at Manx Glass and Glazing. For greenhouse glass cut to size, call 674-573. Simply income protection from Kestrel Insurance. A choice of benefits. Simple underwriting and peace of mind with a regular income for up to two years if you're unable to work due to illness or injury. Kestrel Insurance is registered with the Isle of Man Financial Services Authority. Carpetland, the carpet specialist with the island's best value carpet. Carpets in stock, often fitted within a week. Furniture Land, for three-piece suites, dining and living room furniture and a selection of amazing beds. Carpet Land and Furniture Land, West Street, Ramsey. Manx Mobility in Onken have it all. Daily living aids, wide-fitting shoes, rise recliners, beds and scooters, including lightweight and airline approved models. Call in and see how our expert team can make your life easier. Manx Mobility at the top of Summer Hill. At Bond Fabrics, we're not just a fabric shop. As well as curtains and upholstery and dress and costume fabrics, we've knitting and crocheting walls, made to measure curtain and blind service, plus poles and tracks. Visit Strand Street, Douglas, call 611856 or see bonfabrics.im. You're listening to the Isle of Man's quintessential daily news and current affairs roundup. Update on Manx Radio. Four minutes past five now. It's hoped a pay increase for police officers on the island will help tackle recruitment and retention issues for the force. The starting salary for constables has seen a 12% increase to over £32,000. Justice and Home Affairs Minister Jane Paul Wilson says she's hopeful it will help relieve the pressures on junior officers. There have been 
problems with recruitment and retention, particularly at the most junior end of the constabulary. And so it was recognised that the department working with the Police Joint Consultative Committee needed to look at how that could be addressed. So what has been agreed is that in order to bring police constables starting pay more in line with other areas of the emergency services and criminal justice system, the first three pay points on the police pay scale are being removed, which in effect then lifts the starting salary to be more competitive. So what that should mean, I hope, for our most junior officers already within the force is that they receive pay that I hope will be attractive to them in terms of retention, but also as we go out for recruitment now, that we are able to attract more applicants to join the constabulary moving forward. What will this mean for you and your budget? Because you were one of the departments who had to go to Timwald asking for more money at the end of the last financial year. So is this going to impact your department's budget in any way? Because we were fully aware that this issue of addressing police pay, particularly at the lower end, was something that we would need to address. We have been able to prioritise the funding to make this adjustment this year within our existing budget. I mean, one of the reasons our budget came under such strain in the past financial year was because the Department of Home Affairs meets all of its own utility costs, which is not true of all departments around government. And that was one of the absolutely significant pressures that we saw coupled with pay increases that were greater, again, because of inflationary pressures. So there were some quite unique pressures that came to bear in the previous financial year. But this year, this adjustment to try and raise the starting salary and adjust those who are already in place by reducing the number of spine points, that is something that we are prioritising within our current budget for this year. A questionable extra sitting of the House of Keys, making sure healthcare professionals are in our jurisdiction and concern over the language being used. Those are just some of the issues Onken MHK Julie Edge has raised about the current position of the assisted dying bill. She's been telling Sean Cowper more. Well, I'd like to know who his silent majority is. It's quite clear that the move of the bill, Dr Allenson, hasn't done very much public engagement. In fact, I don't believe he's called one public meeting. We've had seven full days of debate. But actually, the island consultation that he did do at the outset with 3,326 responses, it actually found that the majority are against assisted dying. But Dr Allenson seems to have ignored that result and he wants to quote a commissioned poll by Dignity in Dying, and I don't agree with that. We shouldn't be rushing to a third reading. He's always stated that it's not a race, where suddenly here we are having an extra sitting on the 23rd of July to go to third reading. LegCo do not sit over the summer. LegCo won't be sitting until October unless he's got arrangements with them in place as well that we don't know about. But I do question if he's ignoring an awful lot of the information from the Alman Medical Society where 74% of doctors are against assisted dying. What risk is that for our island? And then when they will not say who can be part of this register, is it just people that are registered to work on the Isle of Man, paying their taxes, part of our community so they can be held to account? We've seen that with recent employment tribunals, haven't we, that we cannot always hold people to account if they're not in our jurisdiction. And that's a real risk to the island, in my opinion. There hasn't been any engagement. Dr Allen's in the mirror of the bill will say he's been to, to meetings, but he's been asked to go to them. I don't believe the public of the Isle of Man are fully aware of the implications of, of this bill. He's all about choice, he says, but let's have that choice then. Let's have the choice of a referendum. Don't be afraid of it, Dr Allenson. Have a referendum. Give the people of the Isle of Man that choice, not the silent majority. He said we need to get to to the stage that we're normalising this. And I was absolutely flabbergasted that he used the word normalise. We're talking about a minority of people that may wish to use this, and we need to make sure it's the most safest piece of legislation for everybody on the island. A lot of vulnerable groups will be very concerned at hearing about a normalisation of assisted dying, and I do think there is further opportunity. Should there be an extra sitting on the 23rd of July to move a third reading of a private member's bill? That's been the Speaker's choice, but it's very questionable in my opinion. So we'll certainly be continuing to work to try and get a referendum for the people of the Isle of Man. It should be their voice, their choice, not just the silent majority to normalise a process for assisted dying.
Onken MHK, Julie Edge's thoughts on the assisted dying bill there. Now, have you heard this today? A number of residential locations across the island will have to go without fibre broadband for the time being, following a recent decision by the planning committee. Manx Telecom had applied for planning permission to erect new telegraph poles at eight locations. However, seven of the applications were turned down. Chief Technology Officer Hugo Van Zell spoke to Siobhan Fletcher following the ruling. Firstly, we, we're quite disappointed about the result because unfortunately it does negatively impact the positive um, momentum we so far had on, on the fibre deployment. Um, what it means at this point is from a Max Telecom perspective, we're weighing up our options. There are a couple of formal routes that we can take and we're deciding uh, which steps to take. Uh, for the customers uh, and the, in those areas specifically, it means that they won't have access to fibre right now, so, so we're delaying the del- deployment of fibre there and, and they won't have access to fibre at this point in time. So then going forward then, if the, the poles have been refused and say, for example, the underground cabling wasn't an option in an area, what's the next step then? What would you look to next? What it means for all of these areas is we've paused the, the deployment of fibre there and we're unable to provide fibre there. It does not mean that we will never get fibre to those areas, but I think as everyone could appreciate then, it requires some additional planning from us and, and we need to see are there any options and, and what might that mean going forward. Does Manx Telecom have to accept that residents might not want the poles out Outside the home. So there, there are various other options um, uh, that we could look at. Clearly if, if the residents don't just want to um, accept poles in the area, there might be other things to, to do and, and we've seen examples in, in other jurisdictions where there might be schemes where, where the residences or the estates make plans of uh, assisting us in opening up trenches and, and those sort of things, but it really becomes a very specific intervention we do then area by area and, and it does delay things. The time now approaching 12 minutes past five. A dentist working on the Isle of Man has been placed under warning following an investigation sparked by complaints from a patient. Dr Byron Sivos was formally warned by the General Dental Council on the 20th of June after a probe by the authority. Sean Kalper has the details. In its report, the GDC revealed the case related to information received about the standard of treatment provided by Dr Sivos to one patient between March and October 2020. Case examiners considered an allegation that his fitness to practice was impaired by reason of misconduct due to matters relating to the loss of a dental burr during a procedure, failure to appropriately refer for further treatment, the management of the patient's condition, antibiotic practice and record-keeping. They concluded that there was evidence to suggest his overall conduct had fallen below the standard expected to a degree, warranting a formal response from the GDC. It was therefore determined that it would be appropriate and proportionate to issue a warning for a period of 12 months for allegedly breaching the GDC standards for the dental team provisions that govern him as a dental professional and to indicate that this conduct should not be repeated. Manx Radio asked Manx Care to respond to the General Dental Council's judgment. In a statement, it told us Manx Care was contacted by the General Dental Council in April 2022 to ask if the owner was on the Isle of Man Dental Performers List. This was in connection to a complaint received by the GDC regarding private treatment. Other than a query from GDC in April 2022 regarding this dentist being on the Isle of Man in relation to a complaint regarding private treatment, Manx Care have not received anything from the GDC in connection with this matter. Manx Care will be raising this important issue with both the General Dental Council and the dentist concerned. There is a requirement for a dentist providing NHS dental services to inform Manx Care of any registration issues as soon as they're aware. You're listening to the Isle of Man's quintessential daily news and current affairs roundup. Update on Manx Radio. Let's take a look at the latest business news now. The Manx National Farmers Union has responded after the Isle of Man steam packet questioned figures used in a recent report into its freight costs. We heard yesterday steam packet boss Brian Thompson say they didn't recognise the stats used, which put the ferry operator's charges for exporting and importing agricultural produce at higher than most, if not all others in the British Isles. Siobhan Fletcher joins me now. So what have the MNFU said? 
Yes, Lewis. Well, it's come out in defence of the report, saying the findings clarify the real cost to agriculture of our freight shipping routes. And it includes comparisons with the arrangements of other jurisdictions and countries, identifying challenges and risks alongside potential solutions to our strategy on imports and exports. It also says it is generally understood that the island's agricultural sector is exposed to significantly higher input costs than its UK counterparts and receives a lower return. Current costs of production and lack of profitable routes to market exacerbate and contribute to a reduction in investment and resilience in the sector. What have they said in light of the steam packets claims to them regarding figures? We heard yesterday that specific example about how prices quoted in respect to transporting milk in the report were seemingly outdated. Yes, so on that, the MNFU says the responsibility that the Isle of Man Steam Packet Company has in delivering a reliable and consistent service for the island is recognised and respected. However, the calculations in the Commission's report credibly rely on the standard rates published by the company, along with the standard rates for other ferry services for comparison, which are generally available and accessible. So what's next? Well, each party we've spoken to in light of this report coming out has said they're open to further discussions. The MNFU says the report and the current review of the Sea Services Agreement provide a pivotal opportunity for the Isle of Man government to revisit the current status quo and create more economically virtuous circle for agriculture. The Isle of Man government's response to the report so far has been one of being open to further dialogue and this is welcome. Here at Manx Radio, we requested comment from the Department of Environment, Food and Agriculture, but we haven't heard back yet. Gromayed, thank you, Siobhan. Time for the latest stock market report from Ramsey Crookall now. Today, London stocks extended their gains, driven by a strong performance from airlines. Investors focused on Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell's second day of testimony to Congress and the upcoming US inflation data. The pound held near one-month highs, buoyed by investor expectations that US interest rates would fall sooner than anticipated, which weakened the dollar. The main influence came from the dollar side following Powell's statement in his semi-annual testimony that the US is no longer an overheated economy. As investors digested Powell's comments, Wall Street trading got off to a mixed start early today. Gold prices edged up. I can tell you they are up 0.71% to $2,380 after Powell's comments suggested a stronger case for interest rate cuts while investors awaited a critical US inflation report. Oil prices also rose. They are up 0.60% to $85.46. Uh, That was on expectations of a drop in U.S. crude and gasoline inventories from the previous week. However, further gains were capped by the resumption of output in the U.S. Gulf as hurricane barrels threat diminished and Chinese consumer demand remained weak. On the markets now, at the close, the FTSE 100 up 0.64% to 8,191. The DAX up 0.92% to 18,404. The Dow Jones a short time ago up 0.13% to 39,344. The S&P 500 up 0.24% to 5,590. And the Nasdaq up 0.34% to 18,491. I'm running late again. Do you know where I put my car keys? In the fridge. Where's my phone? Under the dog basket. Bye. You haven't forgotten that we're seeing Ramsey Crook all later? Oh, um, no, of, of course not. Um, 5pm, is it? Quarter to three. I'll be there. Life is busy. That's why Ramsey Crookall's team takes time to help you make a mindful investment decision. Considering all the options, giving you full control of your financial future. Less stress, more assurance. Forgot to put my shoes on. See how we can make your money work for you. Call 717171 or visit RamseyCrookall.com. Licensed and regulated by the Isle of Man Financial Services Authority. Manx Radio Travel, driven by Keyside Tyres and Service Centre. Well, the main thing to remember tonight, the Southern 100 is on this evening. The Ballown Court circuit will close from 5 past 6 until 20 to 10 tonight. And a reminder, a full day of racing is scheduled for tomorrow at Ballown, which means the course will close in the morning from 9.30 to 12.45 and in the afternoon between 1.30 and 4.45. Elsewhere, a note from the DOI earlier, all surface dressing planned for today has had to be postponed due to the prevailing damp conditions. A plan for tomorrow will be circulated shortly. 
In Lexing until the 18th of August, temporary lights on Pinfold Hill near the turn for London Church Road, 24 hours a day for work on the pavements. And until the 30th of November, temporary lights on Ramsey Road at the Menorca Hill Junction, 24 hours a day for three separate phases of drainage installation. And until the 26th of July, temporary lights on the coast road between Laxey and Dune, 24 hours a day for work on the pavements there. Up in Ramsey until tomorrow, temporary lights on May Hill near the Seamount Road turn, 24 hours a day again for gas main repairs. All flights in and out on time at the airport, no problems expected this evening. And the latest sailing information, Manxman arriving back from Hesham into Douglas, expected just after 6 o'clock. And in around 15 to 20 minutes time, the Mananan is due to dock into the new Liverpool ferry terminal. Ask how you can spread the cost interest-free at Keyside. Now, a public consultation on the future of waste disposal on the Isle of Man will be launched this summer. The Department for Infrastructure says the principles of a new strategy have been formed. The Minister, Tim Crookall, has faced questions in the House of Keys. A policy and strategy meeting on the principles of the waste strategy was presented to the Minister for Infrastructure and the Minister for Environment, Food and Agriculture on the 12th of June 2024. The principles will assist the development of the waste strategy to ensure it's reliable, affordable and the appropriate environmental and sustainable options for the island waste. The principles give the guidelines for the key strategic aims that the waste strategy should address to provide support and disposal options for all of the island's waste from households, commercial businesses, industry and hazard waste, including problematic waste. The policy and strategy presentation include high-level principles on waste collection, waste prevention, reuse, reduce, recycling, recovery, energy from waste, landfill and the legislation amendments required, taking into account the island's distinguished characteristics and physical location, which impact on how waste can be managed while being affordable. The next steps are to go out to both stakeholder and public consultation on the principles, which will be published on the consultation hub this summer. Following consultation, the waste strategy will then be developed in line with the principles to ensure the delivery of the strategy within the island's planned timescale. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, at the moment, many constituents are frustrated at the disconnect between the national government's strategy and what they're seeing in the local area in terms of things like the immunity sites and the Balfain delays due to the coal tar, which were mentioned in the previous answer. The Honourable Member knows that we're trying to deal with the coal tar as a separate issue. It's an issue that needs dealing with, but it is also part of the waste strategy, as is you know, how the civic immunity sites are, uh, are run and also how waste is collected from households and industry. Infrastructure Minister Tim Crook all there. Time now for the latest sporting news. Fast am I, Rob Pritchard. Fast am I, good evening. The second day of racing at the 2024 Southern 100 Road Races is due to get underway this evening. Roads around the Colaspalown course are due to shut at 6.05pm tonight, with the session then scheduled to begin with the Ellen Van Infuel Senior Race over seven laps. That is expected to be followed by the 600cc B Race and 600cc A Race, both of which will also be over seven lap distances. The final contest will then be the six lap A higher sidecar race before roads reopen no later than 9.40pm. Yesterday saw the first two races of this year's meeting, with Michael Dunlop winning the opening Peel Holdings Senior Race, which was declared after two laps. Meanwhile, the following five-lap Mike Carouche Plumbing and Heating Lightweight Race was won by Rob Hodson. Elsewhere, the Isle of Man's national football teams are back in action this weekend, welcoming opposition from North Wales. The Manx men's, women's and under-18 squads will take part in a series of friendlies against Welsh side NFA FC on Ireland across this Friday and Saturday. On Friday, the Isle of Man under-18 team will face an NFA side at the Ballaclone Stadium in Ramsey at 6.30pm, with the Isle of Man women's team facing another squad at the Bowl at 7.45 the same evening. The following day, we'll see the Isle of Man women's side return to the field again at 2.30pm, this time at Mal Blue AFC's Clackvane playing fields, whilst the Ireland men's squad will compete at the bowl at 6.30pm. You can see the details of this weekend's fixtures at manxradio.com. And finally, in cycling, Manx pro competitor Lizzie Holden and UAE team ADQ have just finished outside the top 10 on today's fourth stage of the Giro d'Italia women. Holden's teammate Sylvia Persico was their highest finisher in 11th. It was confirmed yesterday fellow Ireland rider Becky Storry is out of the rest of the event. The team DSM Fermanic Postanel rider suffered a broken collarbone after a crash on the previous stage. Gromayed, thank you. Rob Pritchard, who's down there again tonight at Cross Four Ways for the Southern 100. Of course, a reminder, roads closing around the Balaam course at five past six. Now, it was a big day for music lovers on the Isle of Man today. Tickets for a last-minute gig by singer-songwriter Paolo Nutini sold out in less than 20 minutes. Tessa Hawley joins me now. 
Fair to say, Tessa, this announcement has been well received. It certainly has. The Villa Gaiety only announced that he'd be playing on the 2nd of August, so that's in just over three weeks' time on Monday. That in itself is pretty unusual. Normally big names like this are announced way in advance of the gigs, sometimes even the year before. Now, Tessa, I believe you were in the queue. I was. It opened at nine o'clock this morning. Uh, The Villa Gaiety worked with a company called Ticket Solve as they were expecting it to do well. They said they would make the queuing system as fair as possible. People could also buy their tickets in person from the Villa Marina and the Welcome Centre too, but there was a limit of six. How did you find that process? In advance, Villa Gaiety had warned that if people joined the queue before nine o'clock, they would be randomly allocated a place in line. So I logged on at exactly nine o'clock. It took about 15 minutes to secure the goods, despite warnings of an hour. But there were many people who weren't successful, with the tickets selling out in 19 minutes. Now, many of those people have voiced their disappointment on social media, criticising the process, and we even saw some wild claims of people buying 40 tickets at once. Apparently, there was 9,000 people trying to get through the online system today. But the Villa Gaiety has since confirmed the six-ticket limit was strictly adhered to, and the ticketing system did not crash. And speaking about social media, I've certainly seen some tickets being offered for resale. Some at, uh, well, it's fair to say, inflated prices. What has the Villa Gaiety said about that? There are definitely some people out there who appear like they're trying to make some money off the back of the popularity of this event. But the Villa Gaiety has warned that tickets which are resold for profit will become null and void. It says it operates a strict resale policy, saying if those tickets are resold or transferred for profit or commercial gain, they will become voidable and the holder may be refused entry to the venue without refund. The Villa Gaiety has added it will ensure that the Royal Hall is at full capacity on the night. There is also a waiting list available and anyone who can no longer attend this gig is asked to contact the box office. Tessa Hawley, Gurumayad, thank you and enjoy that show. Well, that's it for Update Today. Do remember, you can contact us in the Manx Radio newsroom at any time by email. It's newsroom at manxradio.com. And as always, there's much more on tonight's stories on the Manx Radio website, including interviews in full in the newscast section. Howard Kane's here next with Spotlight, and after six, it's Greatest Hits with Simon Clark. So stick around. I've been Lewis Foster. Update back again tomorrow at five o'clock. with Maxxis tyres. From city cruising to off-road adventure, Maxxis has a full range of tyres to suit your vehicle and needs. Every tyre comes with a lifetime guarantee, so you can be confident in Maxxis tyres' quality and reliability. For tyres you can trust at highly competitive prices, visit your exclusive local Maxxis dealer, Keyside Tyre and Service Centre. Don't delay, have safer tyres today. Keyside!